Okay, I'm Red Sage, and I'm going to describe to you how to get Star Lancer to work on Windows 10. Stuff you're going to need is a copy of Star Lancer, either a physical copy or no CD crack, because you can't download it anywhere off of like Steam or GOG. You're going to need a program called DG Voodoo, and I'll have a link in the description for that. You're going to want to enable test mode on command prompt uh, by running it administratively. And then you're going to want to download a a secure drive.sys driver file for Windows. So the ways you get that is either A, you have a an old Windows 7 or Windows 8 system lying around that you can copy that driver file from your System32 folder or download it off the internet. I'll have a link in the description for that. You're going to want driver signature enforcement overrider 0.1.3b. Uh, then you're going to extract and run it. And you're going to create a starlancer.bat file but I'm going to describe how to do all of this stuff. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is, you know, get your copy of Star Lancer installed like regular. It's not going to run. So the next thing you're going to want is to get this program, DG Voodoo, like I said, link in the description for it. And then you're going to extract it once you download it, and you're going to copy the DG Voodoo setup into your directory that has the Star Lancer installs in it. And then after that, you're going to drag these three files and put them into the directory of Star Lancer again. Then after that, you're going to actually just run the program. I don't need this file thing anymore. Let's see. You're going to run it. Okay. I'm also going to describe how to get Lego Island 2 to work properly in another video. But here the video for Star Lancer at least. So you're gonna select your graphics card, you're gonna full screen output to whatever monitor you feel like having if you have multiple monitors and it will force it to go to that one monitor. You're gonna do full screen or windowed if you wanna play it on a small ass window, um, but you're gonna stretch it to keep aspect ratio. You're gonna go to DirectX, uh, choose 3D accelerated card, choose the most amount of RAM that your computer can handle. So what this program does is puts a wrap around uh, your graphics card and it makes the program that's in this file directory think oh you have a voodoo virtual 3d accelerated card so uh, you're not going to want to force the resolution on this game because the menus are are hard-coded for 640 by 480 always no matter what and then the game is max resolution is like 1024 by 768 or something like that, something obscure like that. And if you try to force it, no matter what, even if you change the config file in the game, once you unlock it, uh, you're going to crash the game immediately. So just have these settings all about. You're going to click apply, click OK. And it's, uh, it's going to work for that part. So after you do all that shit, you're going to go to your command prompt, run it as administrator. Uh, you're going to basically copy this whole little uh, command prompt line. So it's going to be BC D edit. It's going to be a space. It's going to be a slash. It's going to be set. Test signing on. So what this will do when you press enter, it's actually going to pop up with like a watermark in the bottom right. You're going to restart your computer. It's going to pop up. Your computer is going to be in test mode. So you can actually pick up a driver, sign it yourself. Because the disk driver, this like DRM that they attached to old games back then, they removed the support on Windows 7 but it was still there, so you can just activate it. It was also on Windows 8, but on Windows 10, they just removed the driver, so it completely broke all these old games from like 2000 to like 2008. So you're going to want to do that, and then once you have that and you're done playing the game or whatever, uh, it would be recommended to turn it off so it deactivates that driver. But you can just literally, to turn it off, you just type in off instead. So after you do that, you're just going to reboot your computer. It's startup. It should be in the lower right-hand corner where you have a, a little watermark display. It'll be just some text down there. It says Windows 10 test mode or whatnot. 
And then once you do that, you're going to want to, well, download the second driver that I was talking about earlier. Uh, so you can download it off the internet, or if you have a computer that you're lying around, that's lying around your house, that's a Windows 7 or 8 computer, you could just uh, pull that file from your System32 Windows folder and just look at the driver folder, just see all the directory files for that, and just you know search it up. I'll have a link in the description for download in case you don't want to deal with that. So once you do that, here I'll pull up that page. So, okay. So you're going to want to click down here. You do not want to click up here or anything like that. Click right here and it'll download the file. And what you're going to do with that file after you download it is that you're going to take it to that same folder I mentioned earlier, that Windows System 32 uh, driver file, and you're just going to copy it to that file. I'd recommend keeping uh, a spare, you know, the actual, don't move it, like just actually copy it to that driver. So just in case when you deactivate test mode and Windows has an update, it's going to be like, wait a minute, this isn't a uh, assigned driver that I signed and it probably will delete the driver. So you're going to have to redo that process again every time Windows needs to update. So after that, you're still going to need to sign the driver because it will not activate without being digitally signed. That's why you put your computer in test mode before. And like, like I said earlier, it will show in the bottom right. So you're going to, you're going to download this program. It's called Dip driver signature enforcement overrider. I'll have a link in the description. You're going to run it. It's going to go next. Yeah. You have to accept it. And so you're going to like, you know, enable test mode. You can do it that way too. You're going to enable and then also sign a system file. So when you sign a system file, you're basically going to uh, look up the actual like pathway to it. So on the system 32 file driver, click on it and just basically get a hold of it. And then once you do that, you are going to copy and paste this whole line. See how it shows like here. Let's just do it for an example right here. You're just going to copy and paste it. Uh, once you actually have your sec drive system driver file, you're going to copy and paste it and click OK. It will sign it. And you reboot your computer again. It should run just fine. Should be no issues. And then, okay, don't need that anymore. After you do that, though, oh, I'm just still trying to fucking pull up all my old files again. Um, you're going to need to create a starlancer.bat file. So to create a bat file, you go to notepad and I already have one saved so I'll just edit it and show you an example okay so edit and so when you do it you're gonna go image config here I realized it didn't pull it up you're basically just gonna copy and paste this or type it out I'll have a link in the description for like the actual copy and paste instructions so you don't even have to type anything so image config dash u lancer.exe icd icd is the actual like DRM that needs to be like cracked type of thing if you have an OCD crack and this will actually make your game run on one core of your CPU because this game will try to run on multiple but it can't it's not meant for that it's meant to run on like a Pentium 2 or something like that from way back when so that was a one you know core CPU and the reason and if this hasn't been engaged you'll notice that it will crash when you open up the uh, awards case or it will crash from menu to cutscene, or vice versa. So it will crash a lot if you don't have this running. And so once you actually have this, you know, you save it. I saved it in my directory for Star Lancer itself. Uh, I run it. It will create a config file, which then you can actually edit if you wanted to. This is like the max resolution like I was talking about before. Don't try to increase it any more than that. It will still crash even with the, VD, with the Voodoo graphic settings and stuff. So once you run that file though, when you're trying to play this game, you have to keep that file running. You have to keep it open. So, you know, once you start this batch file, just start it up, minimize it, just leave it running and then start your game. When you start the game, it should run just fine. Welcome to the war pilot. 